Oh, I'm not going anywhere, so. Good morning, you guys, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, give us a shout, actually, where you are. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. It's always fascinating to me to just see, you know, you guys, the magic of what we're doing here, of connecting people from all over the world who have the same idea in mind, which is improving their photography. I love it. Um, if you don't mind, you also, if you give us a thumbs up it seems to help other people find the show so you could certainly go ahead and do that okay well we're going to be talking about something a little different today we're going to be talking about personal development as a photographer and you know if this happens to spill over to other parts of your life so be it development's an interesting concept because hey Yvette um in photography, you know, that's where I came from. The roots of, of photography for me were in the darkroom. That's when it just sparked. Bam! All of a sudden, you know, I was taking my rolls of film to the to the drugstore and they'd come back and they were really muddy and small. And it was like very disappointing. And when I first learned about the darkroom, it was magical. And it still is, I think, you know, that you're, you're u using a tray of chemicals and seeing this print come out of the tray, you know, little by little getting darker and darker and darker and more and more filled in. And that's what development is. And it's interesting, the analogy you can draw between that and your own personal development. Now, you should be developing as a photographer, as a person. Who's behind the camera is you, right? <laughs> that camera is just a mechanical device. Don't ever forget that. As much as we get bombarded with all this stuff kind of brainwashing us into thinking the camera is somehow going to take the photograph for you, it doesn't. You take the picture. You make the picture. Camera is a tool. You know, you could be uh, working with a toy camera, a crummy little toy camera like Teru Kuamea, who I've interviewed, and come away with unbelievable photographs cameras that are nothing they're just toy cameras or you could have the most expensive setup in the world come back with nothing so the camera is just a vehicle it's a toy it's a tool it's a toy <laughs> sometimes it's a toy just remember that it's important as far as your growth and your development so you want to put some time and attention into developing what's going on behind the lens this way i'm a big believer in that and if you've read my book create you know that i've discussed that in great detail it's really all about personal development is what that book is not all about but main one of the main theme of, of the book okay well let's just go ahead and get started so i'm mark silver i'm an author educator in carmel california and if you haven't already done so, would you mind going ahead and subscribing and enable the bell? Because it'll keep you from missing our new shows, and we're going to have some cool shows. And this show is brought to you not by YouTube, but by, let's get that right. There we go. Our friends at Bay Photo Lab. Here's some cool things. Uh, I'm going to actually order some of these ornaments 20% off. I think that's a great idea. What a cool way to show off your photographs, too. Anyway, 20% off. I'm going to do some of our family here and our dog. I mean, how cool is that? That's going to be fun. And then uh, they have a 15% a, a sale on metal prints. Those are really cool. And you can do what they've done. You can divide them into a scene and that sort of thing if you want. But however you want to do them, they're kind of fun. And then albums, you know how I talk about making books and getting, you know, getting your stuff into print. Well, there you go, 25% off on your albums. Get one of those. Make an album, which is a book, 25% off. And as always, you're going to get 25% off on your first order. So 
after the show, run on over there and order something, okay? Do it for yourself. It's all about getting your work out. Okay, let's get into the subject today. So if you've been paying attention, I don't know why this shot here is showing my green screen, but you guys will have to live with it. I don't want to fiddle around with it. Anyway, uh, if you've been around AYP, you know advancing your photography comes down to, or photography comes down to five distinct parts. Visualization is at the heart of it. And by the way, I want to clear up if anybody has this misconception. Let's just knock it out right now. The visualization only applies to certain types of photography, like landscape photography, for instance. BS. It all starts with your vision. It's all guided by your vision. It's all guided by your vision. What you form in your mind comes before you even pick up a camera. Now, let's argue. Mark, but what about if I'm going out and I'm being a street photographer shooting like Henry Cartier-Bresson? Surely he didn't stop and visualize every photograph. You know what? Just the fact that you're going out and shooting on a street you're carrying a certain camera and you are deciding you want to come away with some photographs. Right there is your, vis your visualization. Why did you pick that spot? Why? Why did you pick that genre? Why are you even interested in visuals or in street photography? Because you had a vision behind all that. Do not lose sight of this. This is very, very, very important. And visualization does carry on through the whole process. Cartier-Bresson, you know, we have this incredible video from Dotan Sagai of, of Cartier-Bresson's famous photograph of the man jumping over the mud puddle. He could not see because the camera had to go be poked through the fence. He actually couldn't see the man doing that jump, but he was able to visualize and he pressed the shutter at the right moment. And if he hadn't been able to visualize, he would not have gotten that image. Okay. I'm not going to belabor this point, but I do want to remind you that it is the heart and soul of what we're doing here as creatives. Then the next thing from visualization, of course, is knowing your equipment, which is a tool for creativity. That's how we look at cameras. That's how we look at lights. That's how we look at lenses. They're tools for creativity. Then you capture, which is your lighting and composition. You process, and then finally you share it with the world. That's what makes a complete cycle of photography. And you as a photographer are going to be really as rewarded as you do all five of those things. If you stop, for instance, and you don't share, you're never going to feel complete. You're not going to have the reward of putting your work out to someone else. And I don't care if it's an ornament, like I just went over. Somebody's going to look at that and go, well, that's really cool. Thank you. Or it's a book or it's an exhibit. There's a lot of ways you can share. But the important thing is you, you do complete that full cycle of photography. And that's all driven by your vision. What book you want to design or the fact that you want to put it in a book. That's your vision, right? That's how it got there. Okay, I'll argue with anybody day and night if there's anybody who does not believe that every step of photography is driven by visualization. Speak up now or forever hold your peace. Give me any exception you can think of. Well, Mark, what about, you know, that accidental photograph? I didn't even think about it until, you know, I pressed the shutter just accidentally. Okay, you still had to put yourself there. You still had to visualize yourself as a photographer. Okay, challenge me. <laughs> We're hitting the basics. The basics are those things that you build a foundation with. You cannot build a house without a foundation. I don't care if it's a dirt floor like the houses that I stayed in the casa, casas that I was in in Mexico. They had a dirt floor that was pounded, you know, trampled down. That was still a foundation. And you can't build, you can't put walls up without a foundation. So we're building your foundation and we're making it strong, fundamental, forming a necessary base or core the cent of central importance. I don't want to deal with the sidelight things. I want to deal with the things that really hold up 
that will be as true 10 years from now as they are as they were 50 years ago when I use these cameras I started using those cameras 50 years ago and they still hold true okay there's some areas of interest that I found in surveying maybe some of you guys took part in these surveys um, developing visualization good thing <laughs> if you don't like visual the concept of visualization this is not your channel Go look at something else because I'm going to be talking about it a lot and I'm going to talk about it constantly. And you might think I'm being overly repetitious, but I'm not because it is something we all have to embrace and look at different ramifications of. So developing your visualization is a really important skill. Personal enrichment and amusement. This is what somebody expressed about wanting to get out of photography. It enhances your senses and it gets you more involved with life. So true. So true. I mean, the difference for me between just being a tourist and randomly taking snapshots and really being putting my photographer hat on, really going out with the intention of telling a story about that trip, let's say. Big difference because now I'm really involved. Now I'm really seeing stuff. And I am seeing things more clearly and more brightly and more in depth than I would if I'm just doing snap, snap, snap. That's just sur surface. Okay. You want to get, you want to get into life, get into life. And that's what I love about photography. It's a way to be involved with life. It has a lot more meaning than just pressing a shutter. Being creative. Well, there's that creative process that's in my book, Create. If you haven't got it, you should get a copy of it. Because at the end of the day, photography is a creative outlet. And if you're going to be a photographer, you're probably going to find yourself doing more than one aspect of creativity. You're going to write. You're maybe going to put your stuff in film form. That's another you know, aspect of creativity right there. You might find yourself doing talks about your work. That's another creative outlet. So I like to see you develop not just as a photographer, but multidimensionally as a creative person. And then, of course, sharing to the world. We're not even going to talk about that anymore because you've already heard me mention that. Some of the challenges that were brought up were getting inspired or motivation. I'm going to cover that. That's really important. I get uninspired. I, I lack motivation. And, you know, I get into a little plateau there. And you, ha you, have to, you have to find the thing that's going to spark you out of that. The best thing I know is to look at others' work, whether it's a film a book, you know, we were having this discussion. You can go to a library if your library is open. Go look at the look at the books on the wall. Uh, it's a you might find rows and rows and rows of photography books. You can pull them out right there and look at them in the library or check them out. But it's going to broaden your experience. And of course, going to museums, not being focused. It's really important to find a project and be focused on it. And that's one of the reasons why we've been really successful in our AYP plus group and also in my master class because everybody's very focused on a project and it keeps you grounded. It keeps you, you know, telling that same story, which is actually really important. Overcoming negativity. It goes with the territory, folks. I hate to tell you, I encounter negativity. I do. And, and you know, frankly, the bigger you get, the more negativity is going to probably come your way doesn't go the other way there's 20 percent out there who are going to be negative 20 percent of the population are that's what they do is the glass half empty always 80 percent tend to be more on the positive side even if they criticize they're really not criticizing they're being giving you a critique so that you can improve criticism is just carping one one random uh covert you know, covert hostility. It's not, it's not something that has a benefit at all. In fact, it pulls you down. Um, Self-criticism, don't do that. And we're going to talk about how to get rid of that in a second. Lacking appreciation. Well, if you're not getting appreciated, you may not be putting your work out there. And that's probably where, where the flaw is. Because if you put your work out, you're going to get some appreciation back. It may not be as much as you want or from as many people as you want. And sometimes we want to be appreciated by one person. I remember when I was a, 
a budding photographer, the person that meant the most to me in terms of pre appreciation was my mom. She was kind of like, you know, the ultimate, like if she said, wow, Mark, I really like that photograph. Or she gave me a critique, you know, why did you do it that way? I kind of had to stop and listen to her. She was my biggest fan and my, also the one I would really listen to in terms of uh, a critique. So uh, being more confident comes from just doing it, guys, you know, just doing it, putting your work out there, expressing yourself, and then approaching strangers. We could, we'll do a whole show on that sometime, and I'll invite Doton Sagai and we'll talk about it because he has a whole approach of opening yourself up to the the place where you're photographing letting people know you're not there as a threat anyway that's that's a whole subject unto itself uh, you can also take a more stealth mode which is what Cartier Bresson did he would photograph leave before anybody even knew he was there there's different ways of doing this now there's a workable routine to overcome some of these barriers and over the many decades I've been doing this stuff and my own experience in interviewing and done, having done thousands of hours of interviews with not just photographers but really creative people, I've come up with a couple of fairly easy to do remedies. I mean, these are just a few points I, I'm going to pick out of my book, but these are some really easy ones. First of all, we're going to go, boy, I hope the audio works on this, Jared. We'll see in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a good question. We didn't test that. <laughs> we should have tested it. If it doesn't, I'm going to go to plan B. Um, Jared, do you have a way of, ch of checking it? Or maybe our audience can just tell us immediately. If it's not working, let uh, me know. I'll, because... I'll, I'll know. If, if... Okay. I'll, I'll be able to know. Okay. So we're going to play a little section of an audio recording. When I did the book Create, I interviewed 12 very highly creative people. I recorded those, and then we transcribed them and put them into the book. But a few of those recordings uh, were high enough quality, not all of them, to be able to you know, play back to you guys. And this is David Campbell. He's got something like 480 gold and platinum albums that he has been either a producer on, orchestrated, or he's created himself. 480. There's 365 days in a year, 480. Think about that. That's one year and a quarter of every day producing a gold or platinum album. That's un friggin' believable. So he knows, us, he knows a thing or two about how to be creative. And let's just listen to what his advice was. This is going to help you get over that critiquing or criticizing yourself problem. Okay, Jared, I'm going to play it. For the, just the creative spark. Yep, it's working. Uh, yeah, yeah. Something original or something that's fresh or just or just something that comes from you you know uniquely it's the idea that you you have to keep the the flow going in your outlook or your um you, you how whatever however you come up with things and the things that could get in the way of that are uh, self-criticism. There's nothing wrong with criticizing your own creations, but you have to do it at a certain time. Like when you're just trying to get initially get the ideas, that's the wrong time to then go, oh, that's lame, or that doesn't work. <laughs> it's, yeah. you just keep it flowing, and you keep, even if you kind of innately know, well, it's, I can do better than that. You just keep going, but you keep something going. So, um, and then, then I find very soon after, usually right away, the best ideas come or the best perception of a situation or, you know, because there's a sense of freedom there. It's not stop or stuck by stale ideas or old ideas or what if what would so and so think or any of that if that can't really be in there because it's just naturally going to work against being creative 
So when I just I like uh, sit down to actually, you know, create something in my work like music, um, my main initially it's just just start something. It doesn't have to even be good. I don't care. It just it's the action of doing it, getting the juices flowing. And then once you're, then you get yourself in it and you're excited. And then of course the good stuff's going to come because that's you. Um, and you're not being, putting attention on other people or what they might think. Boy, is that good advice. That is really, really good advice. Don't stop the flow. Get it out there. Get it going. And that's the stage of creativity and it's a stage of photography of working your craft. So you visualize, you know your tools, and then you, you in photography, we're capturing it. In the creative process, we're going out and using our tools to do whatever it is to get that piece of creativity going. But don't, don't shoot yourself in the foot and say, oh boy, like he said, you know, you first could think, well, that's really lame what I'm trying to do. It's no good. And you're just, you're shooting yourself in the foot when you do that. Let it go. Let it flow because the more it flows out, the better it's going to get. And this, this is why, frankly, you just got to do it, do the work. If you're photographing once a week for an hour or two, it's not enough. It's not enough flow. Get out there and, and push yourself to the next level. Make yourself do the things that maybe you have a hard time doing. And, but, but let it flow until you get, like he says, you get your juices flowing and then you get excited about it. Very, very good advice. This is all in the book, Create. So again, read it if you haven't already. All right. Another key tool is observation. And this is so important. You know, Bob Holmes has talked about this a lot. And that is that as a photographer, what you're doing is you're carefully observing. You're noticing things that have some significant worthy of attention details. And you're not just brushing over the surface. It may be like you have to observe when the light is a certain way. Like, how is this light? So Bambi Cantrell talks about going into a room using your hand to see where the shadows are. I have an LED over here. So this is, you know, it's not Vermeer lighting because I have a window here, which is basically Vermeer lighting. It would be coming in from one side. If I turn that LED off, I would be in shadow on this side over here, which would be a Vermeer kind of lighting. But you can do that by just observing Where's the light hitting your hand? Now, you know, it's hitting my hand on both sides because, again, I've got two light sources. But that's something you always want to do. Observe the light. Observe what people are doing. Leonardo da Vinci, and it's in my book also, talks about go out and observe and take your notebook and make notes or drawings. What do people look like in different emotions? Really observe them. Don't shy away. You're on the subway, you're on a train. Look at people. That's a great opportunity. And I think people watching is an incredible sport. Just look at people. What are they doing? Don't be critical of them. I mean, watch them and see how do they respond? Because you as a photographer, I mean, that's what you're doing is you're capturing those moments, but you have to see them first. This is where your visualization comes in. Because as you observe, you start to visualize what that photograph is going to look like. Ansel Adams was driving on his way to the Iwani Hotel to, there's a couple of different versions of the story, but uh, one of them is he was going to a rehearsal and he's driving by and he sees, look at that, my camera just came on. It's weird how it does that. Anyway, he sees the uh, moon over Half Dome in Yosemite. Pulls his Cadillac over, <laughs> he had a cool Cadillac. Pulled out his Hasselblad, and he visualized the photograph. And when he first captured it, it was with an 80 millimeter lens. It didn't, the moon didn't pop because 80 millimeter for Hasselblad isn't considered normal. It's like a 50 on a 35 millimeter. So he switched it up to 160, which doubled, you know, and basically brought the moon in much more closely and compressed it and 
That was it. But he had to visualize, you know, his vision of what he wanted. The lens wasn't the right lens. He switched it around. That's how you use your power of observation and your visualization. Super important. Drill this every day, you guys. Just go around for an hour, a half hour, whatever you can devote to this. Don't even think about pulling a camera out. Just observe and look for photographs. Okay. Strengthen your visualization by going to museums. If they're open, maybe they're not open. If they're not, go to a library. Pull the books out. If they're not open, go to a bookstore. You know, look ideally at the the print on the wall or the book in the in the in the book it's going to be much closer to what that artist really wanted you to see and last case you can look at them online there's lots of online galleries but i'd rather not have you do it digitally i'd rather have you look at it in book form and you know look at what they're what you what are you getting out of this and it's not just photography i'm talking about Look at other forms of art. Look at uh, a Picasso. You, you might go, well, I'm never going to get a photograph like Picasso. But something's going to resonate for you in that photograph. If I mean, it does for me. Uh, Caravaggio, uh, uh, Rembrandt, you know, the famous guys. But look at some of the more, more obscure people. And, and you're going to have something that clicks. And that's going to help you with your own visualization. Uh, keeping a notebook. I'm a huge believer in notebooks. I use them all the time. I got many, 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 many copies of notebooks. Here's a, here's a technical notebook I use to write down my technical settings and that sort of thing. And I've got daily notebooks like this. This is, isn't that a cool cover there? That's the official AYP notebook. We sold them for a while on Amazon. I, stop selling them but I might be persuaded to do it again but I write down what I'm going to do every day and that you got to use your notebook every time some stray thought pops up put it in your notebook or else it can fly away <laughs> Keith Code made that point you know you get in your sparks and it's a good idea to write them down because you might they might fly right out of your head uh, how do you increase creativity by 60%? Is it a pill, a drink, a book, a class? Guess what? It is walking. 2014 study conducted at Stanford University, just right around here, uh, found that walking has a large effect on creativity. Most of the participants benefited from walking compared to sitting, and the average increase in creative output was around 60%. If you just sit all day like this, you're physically also there's a whole physical thing here you got to keep your body moving it's meant to be moving you know just recently like in the last hundred years people have been more in chairs certainly in the last 20 or 30 years because of computers but before that we were always moving around a lot more motion and getting yourself out and getting your mind off of the electronic stuff that we've got around us very therapeutic your mind clears. Beethoven said he got his his visions of his symphonies by walking. I could give you so many case histories. Steve Jobs used to take walking meetings instead of sitting in a boardroom. He says, let's go walk. And he'd go for long walks around Cupertino, you know, which is just kind of a suburban area. It's not nothing cool particularly, but just the fact that they were walking and looking and talking. It, it was a very healthy way to conduct a meeting. So I want to encourage you guys to take daily walks. I get out every day, two to four miles every day, no matter what. And then uh, finally, uh, overcoming some other barriers. One of them is, I don't have time, Mark. I just don't have time to do this. Yes, you do. It's not about having time. It's about making time. You make time for those things that are important. Why are you even here? right now you probably got other things you should be doing right it's in the middle of the day <laughs> but you made time for it thank you for doing that by the way and the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule but to schedule your priorities that's what i do guys these are my priorities i write them out every day on a pad of paper and i check them off when they're done that's my goal is to have everything checked off at the end of the day those are my priorities they're not just random things 
but there are things that are going to make a difference that day in getting me towards my goal. Okay, and I want you guys to constantly be building your greatest certainty. Keep developing your greatest certainties as a photographer. I could ask you right now, what are you most certain about as a photographer? Put that in the comment. Think about it for a second. What are you most certain about? What's your greatest certainty as a photographer? What is it? What's your greatest certainty? And, and develop that and strengthen other areas around that. So maybe your greatest certainty is your camera. You've really gotten into it. You've really understood it. You, you've got a ton of certainty on that camera. Well, that's awesome. Now let's build the other components. Let's get certainty on visualization. Let's get certainty on, on capture and composition. Let's, let's develop these things. So, you know, develop your greatest certainties. Keep improving on whatever it is that you're certain of. Build that up. And I believe if you do those things, you're going to find that you're on the road to improvement. Okay? So that's what I have for you guys this morning. If you have any questions or comments, uh, I'll stick around for a minute or two. But I would really love to hear from you, either if you're watching this live or later on. Tell me what you got out of this. This, is, this isn't just random stuff that I'm throwing your way. <laughs> These are things that have been carefully weeded through and pulled out and sifted through from many, many, many very highly creative people. And I've thrown out a few names, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Ansel Adams. These are some pretty heavyweight creative people. Keith Code, incredibly creative guy. Uh, David Campbell, incredibly creative person. Chris Burkhart. And they all, many of them have these points in common. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Well, listen, you guys, I got a big schedule today. I got to do all this stuff on my notepad here. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. So if you did, would you mind hitting the subscribe button and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows? And I'd love it if you leave your comments and share. If you want to share the video, that would be awesome. That's always helpful. Like, do all those cool things. I will, you know, whatever comment you leave, if it if it needs more than just a thumbs up or thank you, you know, sometimes I just do that. I'll reply to it. Um, beyond that, I want you to remember to get out. Say it with me. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. Stay creative. Stay out there doing your stuff. And we'll see you again next week. Take care.